excuse me guys um this is my house this is my house why are you in my front yard huh no respect no respect <laughs> parts in last week. I was pretty sick last week. I had a flare up. So when I'm sick, I don't feel like doing stuff. Today we're going to put this old sun back in its repository right here. So let's take a look at what we got here. This is the ARB air locker. This is the your carrier bearings. There's one, there's two. This is your, this is your seal housing. This is what takes air. See the hole right there? It takes air from your airline up here and uh, inside the air locker for actuations. Anyway, gosh, this thing is not focusing well. Let's see if I can pry this up one handed. There, see? see here's the, the air hole right there. Now, when you're shimming, it's really important to watch your shims because if you shim too much between the race of your carrier bearing and your seal housing, what will happen is your seal housing can sit proud. See how this is sitting right here? Which means you won't get a good seal. So what I like to do I figure out my total shims needed for my there you go so I got one shim on this side there's still a little lip here it's not terrible but I know that my seal my rubber seal is fully engaged on this surface so that's just something to keep in mind and then these these shims go on top here and that's how you get your, your movement boop, 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 boop. Anyway, so it's really important to make sure everything goes back together the same as it came out. Label everything when you take it apart. Like for instance, this is my right hand bearing cap, arrow points it up. Keep your carriers separated, everything needs to be separated. And before you reuse your shims that you set your differential up with, putting in a new a new unit here. You gonna focus or what? Goodness gracious! I need to get into the settings of this old boy and check out what's going on. But this is the new seal housing here with a new copper line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take measurements just to make sure that it's the same. Because if it's off, then we're gonna have to adjust our shims. All right, so I'm gonna go work on that. Getting everything set up here. Here's what I'm doing next. This this copper airline, you know, it runs inside around the differential, and to keep it up and away, because there's not much clearance in there between the teeth of the ring gear and the top of the case. I want to make sure that it doesn't bounce or move. Once that ring gear's teeth catches that copper line, it can rip it out. That happened to me once before. This failure this time was not that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole or two in the case and tap it and put little brackets in there. That way, maybe once it's all up in there, it can be held. Now I've got that drilled, we're going to put differential in. Let's clean this out first. All right, we're gonna put this in there. All my shims are good, we're good to go. All right, this is gonna not be fun. Taking it out one thing, but with my poor shoulder, it's not healed right all the way, right? It's gonna be hard. <sighs> oh, I don't like this, it hurts. Oh, that hurts, yep. There we go. Okay, get it. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh. All right, we're sort of there, not there, but, Probably a good thing my uh, 
physical therapist doesn't watch my YouTube channel. I might get yelled at, abusing my shoulder. Uh, that was painful. So much pain! So much pain! Who ducked me? I don't know. We got here and they were under service. Somebody ducked me. Let's go check it out. Well, I'll be dipped. Who did it, Annie? Oh, uh, Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> was it me? Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. wasn't well, Annie says it was Mama. This trend needs to stop. I can't. I can't live life being ducked. I got the tube routed through the bulkhead fitting, compression fitting, and the bulkhead fittings back together. Got everything good to go there. We're gonna torque the caps and then move on to cleaning the seal surface. Okay, so I got the axle shafts in, so it's rotating as an open unit. Sent air to it. Yep. She's locked. Oh, yeah. See, there's no... The spider gear inside is not moving. Spider gear is locked out. Notice, not moving. Yep. 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 Spider gear is moving. So, no leaks and positive engagement. Great success. Yay, yay. Very nice, I like it. All right guys, hopefully this focuses, but are you familiar with these style of scrapers? This is made by a company called Astro. It's a tungsten carbide scraper. It's got a little tungsten carbide bit on the end. Revolutionized my life. There. Now we'll just clean the cover off, fill it with sauce, and start putting the outers back together. We'll have this sucker off the lift by the end of the day after all. All right, so it's, uh, it's Monday after work. I'm working on this old sun again. Over the weekend, I pressure washed the engine bay. It'd been running, driving fine, and then all of a sudden, uh, crank, 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 no start. I think I've determined that it's no spark, and these Chevy's have the uh, HEI ignition and the HEI module is pretty notorious from what I understand of just failing and I pressure washed it so I think I I failed it so I went home kissed the girls smacked mom on the butt now, now I'm back down here I'm gonna pull this apart because you can't just go to the parts store because there's like a three pin a four pin and a five pin module and I don't know what it's got in there so we're gonna check it out Yeah, there's water in there. I think I did a number. The other thing that I like to do as I'm going along, snap photographs. So I put stuff back, reconnect things how it's supposed to be reconnected. Warranty is void if module is removed. Does that mean the warranty from 1984? It'd be a shame if I voided that. Back up we go. I got the new part. New part. Who dis? Now, unfortunately, there's a pretty high likelihood that that whole HEI is bad. But I went with the most problematic part. And I'm, I did what you're not supposed to do, and that is you just throw parts at it without testing parts. But I feel good about what I did, and we'll see if it pays off. What do you know? 
it paid off. Fired right up. Good stuff. So, part of me is in a dilemma here. You know, I've got this old pickup, and I, I, it's, it's seems pretty nice. So, it is almost a shame to turn it into a race car. I mean, look at this. It's not terrible. The power locks work. The power windows, both power windows work. Like, dash is mostly there and good all the hvac works except for the ac but that's because the compressor is missing the belt but everything's in the engine compartment the old am fm radio still works the speakers are obviously all cracked the interior isn't trash there's no rust in the floorboards the seat needs reupholstered if you're going to use the bench seat but yeah, power, power windows, power locks. There is rust. There is rust. You know. Rust. Rust. Nothing terrible. The bed, there's only rust in this wheel wells. Everything else is clean. There is not really any rust, any no rust on here anywhere, really besides sheet metal it does have the factory 305 which i think from gm came with 108 horsepower a gutless dog i did find this the other day a little uh you notice notice anything Notice anything on the bell housing? A little, uh, little ventilation. Yeah. So anyway, it's an existential dilemma. Do I turn this into a race truck or do I turn it into a driver? I'm gonna turn it into a race truck. I got to. I got to. There's plenty of other square bodies out there in way nicer shape than this one. I paid 1100 bucks for this. This is going to get a TH400 350 swap. You know, like we're going to fix some of the garbage from the factory. 
Anyway, don't mind me. I'm waxing all poetic. I'm starting to use this up here, which is dangerous. So we're still we're still building the 4600 class race car. So don't worry. I gotta keep an eye on this river. It's runoff and man, those beavers are sure doing a number. I tell you what. So I think I'm gonna call it a night. I'm gonna head home. About time for dinner. And you know how it goes. I'm gonna go home, do my thing, keep it around like a donut, because I'll see you around like a donut.